it's evening time, so let us clear our minds and fill our hearts with good feeling. Sit quietly. Bring your attention to the center of your forehead and see yourself as a point of light, constantly receiving light and might from the supreme light above. I am a soul in this body. Receiving vibrations of peace and happiness. From the ocean of peace and bestower of happiness. My mind is peaceful. My heart is light. Continue to see yourself as a soul, a point connected with the Supreme Light, constantly receiving peace and happiness. Feeling quiet and light as you come in the awareness of the presence. In the background of your mind, let this vision remain alive. Feel that your body is relaxed. Feel that your mind is silent, ready to receive. Om Shanti. So before we begin into um, studying this, uh, new aspects of the food or eating. Uh, I'd like to know, just like last time, to remain focused because it's a huge subject, uh, and we can mind can take us any in any different direction. Uh, to remain focused into what our needs are, I would like to know from you what are some of the things that questions that you have that you wanted to know and uh, I will unmute everyone and then so that I will gear my talk accordingly.
So anybody has any question they can ask, you can unmute. Hi, um, I am J uh, Jada. I'm just gonna put my video on. There you go. Hi, um, and uh, my question is about how. Um, what would what what is the best way to find out what food um resonate works better with our body? Um, like if there's ways to know which you know type of intolerance or things just don't agree. Sometimes I found that even when I'm eating something that's supposed to be healthy, it may still cause like bloatiness or like just put me in a place where then like it makes it hard for me to focus. So just wondering, you know, if um, um, what, what would you suggest like to, to find out what are those things? Um, and then one more thing is also related to uh, if there is, there is such a thing as like, things that are more high vibrational food versus low and what would you recommend like people maybe they're saying you know eating meat may not be the best like any of any insight that you might have on, on that thank you okay. thank you sister edna my question uh my question is around uh, the different meals that we have uh what time of the day should we have those meals and the other thing is, I hear people saying that uh, that you need to take uh, proteins and for that you need to eat meat like chicken or beef. I want to know what are other substitutes for us other than meat in order to make sure that our body is getting all the necessary nutrients if we become purely vegetarian. So what sort of nutrients should we be taking? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Sister Cynthia. I love all those questions. So I'd love to hear answers to all of them. And I'd also like for you to speak to um, the, like the timing on food, like, you know, where fasting fits in, intermittent fasting, and then like, I've heard different thought processes on like a day a week of fasting from food and technology and like, you know, maybe doing a longer fast and how that might support the body and the organs. Okay. All right. So thank you for these questions. We'll cover these and many other aspects. Uh, what I want to uh, present is uh, give you an understanding of uh, uh, what is important, how we can choose, understanding uh, a spiritual aspect, which is largely unknown. Uh, we, we may have a lot of knowledge about the physical aspect. But I'll go over the physical aspect uh, initially. And that is more like information. And uh, this, is, this is something that anybody has access to from the internet. Uh, but the second aspect will be the spiritual. And that is, the, my, that is my goal today, uh, intention. Because once we, once we know the spiritual aspect, of eating, then uh, most of the questions that we have, uh, we find an answer in that one. Uh, because there is so much, uh, the uh, eating and food is so diverse and there are so many different opinions. Uh, it can confuse anybody easily. Uh, once you know the spirituality, it becomes uh, easy to choose. So starting, um, the first aspect is a physical aspect. Uh, the uh, food has uh, different nutrients. Uh, the carbohydrate, protein, fat, uh, vitamins, minerals, water. Uh, what is the purpose 
of the carbohydrate. It is the energy providing food. Uh, when we, uh, uh, whatever we do in life, even uh, thinking, if not physical, uh, we require energy. And uh, even uh, cellular um, uh, mechanisms, whatever uh, the cells do, uh, these all these requires energy and energy comes from the carbohydrate which is the ready source uh, and the carbohydrate uh, you can uh, divide the carbohydrate into uh, three uh, big groups simple sugars starch and fibers simple sugar is the the sugar the white sugar that we have the processed sugar and then uh, um, the starch. Starch is more complex carbohydrate uh, where the different molecules, uh, glucose, galactose, fructose, different molecules are combined. And uh, it is uh, the body has to break down when we eat that uh, to uh, derive the simple sugars. And the simple sugar then goes into the, into the blood and reaches the different organs. So body has to work to break down the starch into simple sugars. Simple sugar is the source for the energy. And the third is the fiber. The fiber is also a complex carbohydrate uh, where it is more complex than the starch. And it is, uh, the body uh, cannot digest it, cannot break it down uh, easily uh, to derive the simple sugars. So a lot of for the fibers that we eat, it is under it uh, cannot be uh, digested. <clears throat> so this is the uh, simple under understanding. With this understanding, uh, one would think that uh, it is good to eat the simple sugar why the body need to break down anything, uh, but it's uh, the reverse. Because when you eat the simple sugar, yes, you get the energy right away, but then what happens is the surge of the uh, insulin and uh, gluco glucagon, the different hormones, they occur uh, in the body. The pancreas uh, need to secrete them uh, so if you keep eating the simple sugar, there is no um, uh, good uh, mechanism when to stop. So you can, you can tend to have more of the simple sugar in your body system, and then you can have problem. So, and then secondly, the, uh, the hormonal surge cannot be adjusted well with the simple sugar. So the best principle, avoid simple sugar, not even one tablespoon or a teaspoon. If you have to, one teaspoon per day of simple sugar. Most of your uh, carbohydrates should come from the other two ingredients. Uh, the 50% at least from the starch and uh, the 50% from the fibers. This is the rough estimate number, but why? Because then if you eat the complex carbohydrate, this complex carbohydrate, then it becomes a slow release mechanism. So you have eaten the carbohydrate slowly. Now you get that the body derives the glucose as it is needed. So you don't get a big surge and then there is uh, no uh, sugar. So you have up and down of the sugar. So hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, both are bad, right? So, and uh, what are the sources for the, the starch? Uh, the wheat, the beans, the legumes, the... Uh, all the beans and uh, uh, different kind of beans that is available. And uh, 
the fruits and vegetables. Now, the what are the sources for the uh, the uh, the fibers? These are mainly uh, the fruits and vegetables, mainly the vegetables, the green leafy vegetables. Um, what is the role of the fibers? Uh, we understood the role of the starch, slow release car carbohydrates, slow release source for the, uh, uh, the sugar. What is the role of the fibers? Uh, if when we saw that it, you cannot derive anything from the fibers, so why do you have to have fibers? It is very important. One is uh, as you eat the fiber, uh, it provides a bulk to, to your food. And so uh, it has a role in making you, uh, uh, making your satiety center uh, feel good. That means you don't now overeat. So it has, uh, it, it has a role in reducing the weight or keeping your weight in balance. Um, secondly, uh, the fiber uh, creates uh, a good flora in your colon and has been known to have a protective role in, against the colon cancer. Uh, thirdly, it can have the uh, cholesterol lowering effect. And it uh, uh, protects against the um, constipation. So there are many advantages of use of the uh, fiber and uh, the more and more uh, uh, there is awareness of the of the need to use the fiber. So that's a simple understanding of the carbohydrates. And the when we uh, talk about the uh, proteins, uh, the proteins. Uh, so. Uh, the proteins, unlike the carbohydrates, has to be taken daily. Carbohydrate, as we saw that, if we take excess amount of the carbohydrate, it will get accumulated in the body. And a lot of it get converted into the fat. And uh, it can lead to obesity. Uh, the cell has the limited amount of capacity uh, of storing this excess amount of the sugars or even uh, fat. So what happens is the excess amount of the sugars that we eat, it gets stored in the form of the fat. So fat is a long-term uh, source for the energy. So when you have a starvation situation, let's say you have not eaten or you fast, then uh, uh, the fat is digested because there is no uh, incoming source of the carbohydrate, but your body has the fat. So this fa fat is digested and it becomes a source for the energy. Uh, unlike uh, these two uh, uh, stores, the protein cannot be stored in the body. Protein has to be taken daily. So if we don't eat the protein, uh, then uh, we will have some, you know, some problems. So there should be a daily source of the protein. Uh, proteins come from uh, different, uh, you know, like uh, the best source for the protein is the meat. That is the uh, medically known as the best source because it has all the essential amino acids. Amino acids are the central unit of the proteins, like the glucose being the central unit of the carbohydrate, same way amino acid for the proteins. There are essential and non-essential amino acids. Essential amino acids are the ones that we need to have, but we don't make. Non-essential we can make, but essential amino acids we have to have uh, we have to take it in the form of food from outside. And the meat has all the essential amino acids. Uh, the, uh, the alternative for the meat 
is uh, the vegetables, the lentils, the wheat. These are the commonly used the bread that we have. These are commonly used source for the, uh, the proteins. And uh, lentils and beans, legumes, uh, these uh, are not as good as the good source of the uh, protein as the meat, all of them, even the wheat, uh, because they do not have the, all the essential amino acids. Uh, so the one wise thing to do is if you are a vegetarian and, uh, or if you prefer not to eat the meat, then it is good thing to mix two lentils or beans and lentils or wheat, uh, two different types of flours. So that way, if one, uh, uh, one lentil does not have the one essential amino acid, the others would have it. Uh, so that way, combination of different uh, uh, foods will make it as good as the meat. Now, uh, let me, since we are here in this uh, area, I want to compare the two, the meat versus uh, the proteins from the meat versus proteins from the uh, the plant, plant-based proteins. Um, the meat proteins are pure proteins. There's nothing else in the meat other than the proteins. Versus plant uh, proteins also would have fiber. For example, the wheat. Wheat would have, the whole wheat would have outer husk and that uh, can be a fiber. If you take the beans, different types of beans, it would have outer covering and that would have the fiber. So there is, it is a source for the fiber also, the, the, the plant proteins. And uh, also in its covering are the different vitamins versus meat is just the protein. Uh, here, the plant-based proteins would have the source for the vitamins. Then uh, there are many antioxidants supposed to be in the plant-based proteins. And we will talk about the antioxidants in, in, uh, in a few minutes. But uh, so there is many, much more than just the meat in the plant-based uh, proteins. So if you, are, if you prefer to use the, um, uh, the plants and not use the meat, then I think it is a relatively healthier choice. Uh, meat being the animal uh, uh, product, uh, our body is not designed to uh, break it down so easily. Versus a plant, it's uh, easily digestible, more easily di digested by the body than, the, than the, the meat. So these are some of the differences, not to put down one versus the other, but just to make ourselves knowledgeable, these differences, if we knew, then we can choose the right food. <clears throat> then, uh, so, but the most essential thing to know is protein has to be, there should be daily source for the protein. Um, if we one day, if I don't have the protein, uh, I cannot hope to have it from inside my body, you know. So I subject myself to some uh, some problem, and uh, so uh, that we have to make ourselves aware, uh, especially when we fast. Some people fast and they have a protein bars. So this is the reason why they have a pro they use the protein bars. Um, then uh, the, the oils, the fats, or the lipids. Uh, lipids are the long, uh, slow, really slow uh, source for the energy. 
uh, they you can say you can call it as a storage you know so if we have a lot of things that we just store and then we can use it at the time of the need so that's what the uh, the lipids are uh, simple understanding of the lipid is um, there are two big categories saturated and unsaturated saturated fat unsaturated fat saturated fat uh, usually the butter something that that is solid at the room temperature level and unsaturated usually liquid uh, it is best to avoid the saturated as much as possible uh, because in a late term, you can say that if something is solid at the room temperature, when I consume that, it will become solid in wherever it goes. You know, medically, there may be a different explanation, but just remember like this, so you know not to uh, make it as your main source for the, uh, the oil or the fat. Uh, unsaturated are poly and monounsaturated. Um, and the, each of them have different uh, chemical constituents, and we call it like that because of that reason. Uh, the good thing about the uh, unsaturated uh, the fats or uh, fatty acids is uh, it decreases the uh, LDL low density lipoproteins. Uh, and I will come to that, what is LDL, what is HDL, I'll come to that. But for now, just remember LDL, HDL. LDL, HDL, high density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein. Uh, what, what this is, is when you, when you consume the oil, these oils do not mix in the blood. So you eat and the intestine, from intestine, it gets uh, absorbed into your system. Uh, and then in the system, it has to get transported to the different organs. How it can get transported if it does not get mixed into the, into the blood? So what happens is the certain other proteins uh, act as a carrier. So these proteins are lipoproteins, we call it low density lipoprotein, high density lipoproteins. The LDL carries uh, these, uh, uh, these oils into cells and different areas where it is needed. And the excess amount uh, of the LDL tends to get accumulated into the, into the cells. And once the cell is fully saturated with that one, it now gets, uh, tends to get accumulated into unusual areas like blood vessels. And so if you can imagine if the heart, uh, heart's uh, blood supply is dependent on three main vessels. And if uh, this LDL gets, uh, 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 brings the, the cholesterol, uh, into this blood vessel, uh, then it becomes tends to become narrow. So now you have less blood supply to the heart. And uh, the same thing can happen to the brain. Uh, you know, these clogged arteries or narrowed arteries can have uh, a bad effect on these vital organs. And uh, same thing can happen to your kidneys. So these are very important organs that uh, depend on their blood supply. And so, uh, that is why it is generally uh, considered as a bad uh, uh, protein or lipoprotein, bad cholesterol. The LDL, uh, the, the oils that are carried into the system on the LDL. The HDL, on the other hand, it transports these uh, the, the cholesterol out from the cells, wherever it is, into the liver and out into the intestine. So it is generally considered as good because it 
it pulls out the, the cholesterol, excess amount of the cholesterol, and uh, it facilitates the excretion of them. Okay, so this is just uh, uh, this little understanding has to be there when, uh, when we choose our uh, food. Uh, there is uh, something called as a very low density lipoprotein. Uh, just to give you understanding, it and the LDL, you can look at it, uh, in a similar way. That also has a deleterious effect on the body. Um, then we have vitamins. Uh, the two main groups of vitamins are water and fat soluble vitamins. The fat soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K. And the uh, water soluble are B, C. The difference is the fat soluble vitamins can be stored into your body. So whatever you eat, you can, you can have a storage. So if you don't get the da daily source of, for example, vitamin A, you're fine, your body has it. Um, the, the water soluble, there has to be daily a source of water soluble. So B and C. Uh, one exception would be vitamin B12. So vitamin B12 can be stored in the liver. All other B, you know, there are so many Bs, B1, B2, B6, B12. <clears throat> Uh, B5, and, and all these are, uh, the vitamins are important for microcellular function. All of our digestive process, the thinking, uh, all the cellular level mechanisms, they require uh, these uh, vitamins in different things. And so we need to have the source of, uh, we need to have it available. So importance of vitamin C daily source, uh, it, there should be a daily use of the citrus uh, fruits, or if not lemon, and, and thereby the importance of the lemon water, uh, then uh, citrus fruits, then uh, vi vitamin B, there should be daily source of the, the vegetables, green leafy vegetables, they would have plenty of vitamin Bs. Um, uh, vitamin D, I want to uh, mention. Uh, D uh, is uh, important for the bones. And uh, it, ha it uh, has uh, relevance with the uh, metabolism of the calcium, uh, calcium and phosphate you know the calcium is important for the bones. Uh, and so what we eat, uh, the food that containing calcium or drink, for example, milk, this calcium need to be absorbed from the intestine into the, our system. And vitamin D plays an important role. If we don't have vitamin D, then it is difficult for the body to absorb the calcium from the intestine into our system. And also D helps it depositing into the bones. So it's important ingredient. So D and calcium, they both uh, they work together like this. Uh, vitamin D is uh, essential for uh, the bones, the teeth. And as we age, you know, about 60 to 65, uh, these, uh, the, uh, the source for the, uh, the calcium and everything may remain same, but what happens is uh, the, the bone begins to become more porous because uh, the, uh, the structure of the bone, it becomes less. So bone has two components. One is a uh, infrastructure and that's, that is the main bone and then the calcium on it and that's the secondary uh, part of the bone. So uh, in, as we age about 60 to 65, 
the main part of the bone, it becomes less. Just like how the muscle decreases as we become older, the, the bone mass decreases. So we call it osteoporosis, osteopenia. And um, it is important to, um, uh, to keep a watch on, uh, on the bone strength. And also it is important to supply the calcium and vitamin D. Uh, so that is, although it is secondary, it is important. So you cannot just have the um, preservation of the main bone component you need to also have the calcium and vitamin D. Then we have the minerals, different minerals are available. There are uh, sodium, potassium, you know, magnesium. All of them are important at uh, the microcellular fun for the microcellular function. If uh, they're all of them are so important that if one thing is missing and you would have some, uh, you know, effect uh, on the health. So there could, be, there could be a deficiency. Uh, I want to give example of the sodium. Uh, you know, the salt that we eat is the source of the sodium, uh, so sodium chloride. Uh, um, and um, it is important at every different cellular uh, function, cell membrane, cannot function without the uh, sodium. Sodium, calcium, potassium, there are channels that are made up of these things. And so different uh, uh, aspects, uh, every aspect of the cell uh, function, it's important. But then how much so uh, the body needs and how much we need to take? Uh, and what happens if we take more? If you eat a lot of salt, then uh, it, uh, it tends to accumulate uh, in the body, in your uh, intravascular system, and it tends to create an uh, environment of high blood pressure. Uh, that would be the number one cause increase intake of the salt would be the number one cause for hyper, high blood pressure, hypertension. So we have to watch how much salt we are taking. And uh, it is uh, generally said that uh, no more than one teaspoon a day of salt. One teaspoon per day per person, no more than that. So if you are, if you are fond of eating French fries, just be aware how much salt was used in the French fry, that much uh, salt you need to uh, avoid in the other foods. Uh, the best policy is if you cook your own food, then, uh, then you know how much salt you're using. You know, if you use, if you buy something from outside, you don't know how much salt that goes into the food. <clears throat> uh, so just, uh, be aware of that. Then we have uh, the water. Water is the most essential uh, component of our body. 70% of the body is water uh, in an adult. Uh, and it could be as high as 90 to 95% in uh, you know, newborns, 90, 90% almost. Uh, so these... Uh, um, it's very important uh, because uh, water intake uh, has to be uh, um, constant for balancing all the different aspects of metabolism. Um, now, I want to give uh, a little time to something called as uh, antioxidants and free radicals, because uh, that is, uh, you know, talked about a lot. And then we will jump into the second part of the spiritual aspect of the eating. Um, a lot of uh, commercialized um, uh, nutrients are available 
and they commercialize as antioxidant and they commercialize as uh, being protective in uh, uh, protective in um, your improving your immunity, decreasing the chance of having cancer, uh, decreasing the coronary artery disease, heart attacks, and also preventing uh, aging. So this is how it is commercialized, antioxidants. Everything that we do in our life, including um, uh, exercise, uh, exposure to the sunlight, uh, smoking, anything that uh, um, exposure to environmental uh, fa factors, this leads to some kind of a stress or wear and tear of the cells in the body. Mm -hmm. So uh, this wear, uh, what happens is that the, uh, some uh, molecules, some atoms, uh, they become uh, hungry for the electrons. So cell damage occurs and uh, some atoms become hungry for the electrons. And so they uh, go about uh, into the body uh, to look for the uh, electron and it steals the electron from the other cells. And uh, as it does it, it creates what is called the free radical, free radical. So the free radicals are the ones that does not have uh, balanced protons and electrons. So there's a, some lack of the electron is there. These uh, free radicals can are um, thought to cause damage uh, in the body uh, damage in the gene genetic system. And uh, so there was one article several years ago and uh, that proposed that that causes, uh, that can cause cancer, et cetera. And so what happened is uh, the health, uh, the, the diet industry took this article and commercialized that. Uh, article and and uh, started to produce uh, uh, the foods that are supposed to be antioxidant. So this free radical, how to treat free radical is provide some nutrients that can provide the electron to this electron hungry particles. So now uh, they are no longer damage our uh, body systems. That's the idea. And uh, uh, the medical uh, journals, uh, they say that, uh, where do you get that from? Uh, the, uh, the, they recommend that you get it from the fruits and uh, you know, uh, fruits and vegetables. So they, they begin to commercialize many fruit items uh, as an antioxidant. So these antioxidants, uh, subsequently what happened is now as a result of this commercialization, uh, many uh, health products were there in the market and people started to buy it and uh, thinking that this will decrease my uh, aging, this will uh, you know, prevent cancer, et cetera. But subsequent journals, uh, the sci scientific papers suggested that there's no correlation. There's no correlation between antioxidant and aging, no correlation between uh, cancer and uh, antioxidant. Uh, but the, uh, the food industry did not stop. It continued to produce and market as such. Uh, so you can see how much impact uh, that there is of the, what we know as a, um, in the science and how uh, the information uh, can, uh, um, you know, deviate our uh, choices, the media. And so um, some, some other articles, they even suggested that if you 
some of the some of the antioxidants are like vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, you know, beta carotene. So some other articles suggested that some of these antioxidants can cause cancer. Initial articles say that it can prevent cancer. Subsequent articles say that it can cause cancer. One of the ones antioxidant supposed to be, it can, um, uh, this article suggests that it can cause cancer of the lung, lung cancer. So I want to, I wanted to present this to you because you want to be, you, you want to be knowledgeable. You don't want to just look at something just because it sounds very attractive, it is presented in a nice manner, you want to be aware. And, uh, you know, science is, is uh, you can say science is still not completely mature. It doesn't know uh, everything, you know. We know a lot of things, but not everything. And so it is, you cannot take it as a pinch of salt. So this is where, I want to bring the subject of spirituality because how to eat, how much to eat, you know, all this we need to know uh, because we need to take care of ourselves. So I think that's a lot of uh, talk in the direction of the physical aspect. Let me, uh, let me, uh, show you a slide, let me see this. Yeah, let me uh, share the screen. Okay, so you have this PowerPoint in front of you. <clears throat> So we have, let's just take a, take, take a minute and, uh, and just try to silence our mind because that's a lot of heavy thoughts that I provided. Take a minute and let all these thoughts just settle down. You may even want to neglect what you think was not necessary. And like we meditated in the beginning, just think of yourself as a soul receiving light and might from the Supreme Soul. And feel that you are light, you are your mind is relatively silent. All right. Now, uh, I just uh, look at this tree. When we eat, uh, it is not just the body that receives. This is the diagram to emphasize that. If you look at this diagram, there is a fruit, which is the health, which is the end result. And at the root, there's a seed. This is the soul. And then there's a supreme soul. Soul, supreme soul connected. The soul is the seed. And then there are roots, there's trunk, the branches, and leaves. The, so the, um, the roots, trunk, branches, leaves, they provide the nutrients and uh, that results into the fruit. Similarly, our health depends on 
how we are, what I am deep inside. Is it, is it just the, what I receive from outside? That's how my, uh, I bear the fruit. In other words, is my health dependent on just the food that I eat? Not necessarily. How I think also makes a difference, right? Because there is a component of either soul. So it is how I think, how I am, makes a difference in what my, how my health is, not just what I eat. So I, the soul, is also, uh, or my spiritual aspect, uh, the spiritual aspect is also important, a nutrient for the health. The spirituality is also important for the health. Vice versa. Uh, when uh, what I eat, it depends on how I am inside too. So like if I, the soul, am content, then I will choose very wisely. If I, the soul, have a feeling of need or want, then I will make an unhealthy choice. I will have excessive amount of some food that may not be good for my body. So as a soul, what my level is, who I really am, that makes a difference. Uh, if if uh, I am undergoing a stress situation, for example, then I would tend to eat junk food. I would tend to eat uh, irresponsibly because I, uh, my stage is I'm unhappy, uh, a sorrowful soul. That's my stage. So I work from that level and then I make wrong choices. That's one. Second aspect is, let's, let's say I don't just even uh, entertain that idea that I'm a soul and I purely work as a body. As a body, I select the best food. I eat my perfect diet, perfectly healthy diet, uh, what my body needs and exercise and everything. Will that make me uh, perfectly healthy, not necessary, not necessary. Because even the best of the best athletes, they, they would have some kind of health problem down the line. So again and again, there is a emphasis that the soul has a big role to play in our health. So that uh, I want to give this idea to you by showing this picture that uh, the awareness that I'm a soul, it can really make a difference in what I eat, what I choose. And not just awareness that I'm a soul, but awareness of the deeper level of who I am. Uh, meditation is, you can broadly say meditation is two-step process. One is connecting to yourself and second is connecting to the supreme light. Connecting your, to yourself is going from outside to in, going from uh, the superficial to deep real you. And deep within we are very powerful being very pure being, very happy being, very loving people, loving souls deep inside. 
But then outside we have different layers. And these different layers could be dependent on what we experienced in life. And these, these outside layers could be, I have a sorrow, I have weakness, I'm a weak soul. You know, that's my outer layer. So I don't want to work from this outer layer. My outermost layer is this body. I don't want to work as this body. I want to work as an intelligent being that is inside me. So if I work as this body, then I become vulnerable. As long as I can fit, keep my body fit, I'm good. But then the moment uh, the time takes me down, then I suffer a loss. You know? So I want to work as an intelligent being who is always in control, always in power, always uh, healthy so that I can really take care of the body and my health in the best way. So I want to be aware that I'm a pure soul. And pure soul means no impurity, nothing negative, no weakness. I wanna show this uh, picture. We want to be intelligent also. We just don't want to be, uh, you know, totally spiritual, totally body conscious. We want to have a good balance. We want, we are living in this world. We, we better know everything that is going around. <clears throat> so every food that we have, we select, there is uh, this nutritional facts is there. FDA, it mandates the, uh, the labeling every food. So uh, why I brought this up? Because you need to be aware. You just don't look at this label and you know neglect it. Learn what it is. At least if not everything, learn a little bit about it. Uh, today, I would point out to uh, one or two facts here. So if you look at this, uh, serving size, servings uh, 200, Serving size, one tablespoon is 15 ml. So that means that much, that much will have all this, uh, what is uh, depicted here. So if you take one tablespoon of this oil, you're having 120 calories. So if you have two tablespoons, you have 240 calories, right? And uh, on an average, uh, on an adult, uh, rough estimate 2,000 calories per day. And uh, of that, as I mentioned, uh, you know, you use less, um, as much less of uh, the <clears throat> oils because, uh, you know, all the carbohydrates that we eat, uh, it gets converted into a lot of uh, fat inside the body. So you use a max about two tablespoons a day. Max two tablespoons in cooking, no more than that. Uh, but uh, I want to point out this, uh, see this label that says 18% uh, DV, 0% DV, 0% DV. What are these DVs? Daily value. That means if I take this one tablespoon of, if I use a one tablespoon of this one, I will have 18% of the total fat. Of 18% of my daily requirement comes from that one tablespoon. That's what that means. So if the FDA has made it very easy for you to know, okay, this, you look at this label and you know how much you're getting. So you know for sure that when you are uh, when you are using this one, uh, for example, take the sodium zero percent DV. You know for sure that you have zero sodium in this one in one one tablespoon. So all your sodium requirement has to come from somewhere else. You see. So that's uh, so. This is being smart. You learn 
And a uh, lot of this information out there in the internet, you can learn. So make yourself uh, knowledgeable so you can make a good choice. We saw this, you know, different types of lipids, saturated, unsaturated, mono, poly, uh, major source of the energy. Um, we saw the oils are uh, the, the processed and unprocessed oils. Uh, the difference between processed and unprocessed is a, the oil that is, for example, olive oil. Uh, the olive oil, pressed olive oil, and bottled, pressed and bottled olive oil would be unprocessed. And unprocessed uh, would be nutritionally high value because it has all the vitamins and all the ingredients that you want. But the problem is uh, you can't store it for a long time. It gets bad, so you need to look at the date. If you have olive oil that you buy, you, you better look at the date, expiry date. You don't want to use the expired, then you're getting nothing. Uh, another thing about the, um, the process, un unprocessed is uh, you, you cannot use it as uh, for the cooking as a cooking oil because if you cook it, it would have the smoke. Uh, you know, it would convert into a part of it gets converted into um, into something that is uh, not good for you. You know, so use a processed oil which you can store for longer time. It will have natural taste. And it would not have that uh, uh, negative ingredient when you use it for the cooking. There's something called as a high and low smoke point. Smoke point is uh, when you when you apply heat to the oil, it begins to smoke. Uh, some of them will begin to smoke earlier, and some of them withstand the heat for longer time and does not smoke uh, that faster. So the higher the smoke point, the better it is because it doesn't get converted into the bad kind of a fat. Uh, there's something called as a trans fat. Trans fat is, uh, <clears throat> uh, is one fat that gets, uh, uh, that, the, uh, that increases your low density lipoprotein and decreases the high density. So it's bad both ways. Uh, and you want to avoid it at all the cost. It is uh, considered so hazardous that FDA removed the, um, the trans fat from most of the food items. It, uh, they used to use the trans fat into uh, commercialized foods like popcorns and uh, you know different, uh, the fast foods that you, they used to use because uh, it is very easy to uh, keep the, the food in that one. So nowadays they don't use that much. Uh, so if you see different labels, you will see trans fat as zero. Most of them, uh, in USA, it will be zero guaranteed. You can't use it, it's illegal. Uh, but you can produce trans fat by heating the oil too much. Just know that especially the unprocessed ones. It is good, but you can't uh, smoke it. You can't uh, overheat that one. So it's used, if you want to use it, olive oil, avocado oil, use it as a dressing. Don't use it for the cooking, try not to. There are some commercially available avocado olive oils that you can use for the cooking also, but then you be careful what the heat, you have to be, make yourself aware what is the smoke point is, okay? Okay, mm. I think uh, because we are 7.38 and uh, half an hour to go, I will just stop giving this more lecture about these things. And then uh, let me take you into a little bit of spirituality. Uh, Sister Giada was asking uh, the best food for the body, uh, increase vibration, uh, the high vibration, low vibration uh, food, and uh, the question about the meat, etc. right? 
So the best food for the body is the uh, balanced, balanced uh, food. You know, you need to have carb all these six ingredients that we mentioned, carbohydrate, protein, fat, minerals, vitamins, and water, all of them in a balanced way. How do you know how much you need? Your body will tell you, you know, listen to your body. Uh, and uh, of course, your liking has to be there. And uh, <clears throat> uh, you should not force yourself into eating something that you think is uh, nutritionally better uh, and then or spiritually even better and then force yourself and then stress yourself out. Mm -hmm. If you stress yourself out and then um, uh, then you're uh, you're losing the value that you would get from the food. So you have to uh, you have to choose uh, wisely, but you also uh, want to have good interest in what you're choosing. And how you can do that is by first becoming aware of you, who you are. Once you know who you are, I'm a soul, then you can really uh, choose uh, and you can have interest in something that sounds like not very interesting. And it becomes it becomes natural. As a soul, you you don't uh, have that de dependency on many external things. So you know, as a soul, this is good for me, and then you will have natural liking for those things. So that is a rule number one. Whatever you do, you know, do it, but become a soul become soul conscious and then choose, that would be rule, rule number one. Uh, and food, uh, food best for the body, just to give you some tips, um, you know, the, the fruits and vegetables should be included in your daily diet um, uh, because it provides a source for that fiber, it provides a source for that starch that we mentioned. Uh, and uh, because you need energy throughout the day. And it has uh, the subtle uh, ingredients of vitamins and minerals, lots of fruits and vegetables. So salads should be, uh, you know, a daily intake of the salad is a very important. Uh, fruits uh, should, uh, should be there always, at least two to, two to three times a day. Uh, and then some vitamins may, may not be available all the time. So vitamin C, especially, you know, lemon water, important. It also has antioxidant. Uh, now, I gave you a big lecture about the antioxidants. So don't think that you should avoid antioxidants. It has value. So use antioxidant. You know, vitamin C is a good source for the antioxidant. If you look at the science, you'll have always have a conflict. You know, there will be some articles promoting something. There are some articles, you know, negating the, what the other articles said. And uh, you really have to be a good statistician to tell what is good, what is not. And still you cannot derive the right thing. So become soul conscious. Make, make good choice, be happy and use it. <clears throat> and meat, I told you about the meat. Uh, the meat is the best protein, but it has only protein. Just know that. There are, they, you can have the combination uh, proteins from the plant-based, and you can uh, derive uh, a high, high quality uh, proteins from the plants. Um, Vinod? Yes. Elizabeth here. Um, I also understand that we can get the nine essential um, amino acids from plant-based foods. Sorry, my camera moved. And um, I guess I wanna make sure to put a good plug that you can have a really, uh, cause I am somebody who's always needed a lot of protein and um, it helps stabilize my blood sugar. It just keeps me on keel. And so, I mean, I am not 
a medical professional, but I, from the um, those that I have been in co connection with, have made it clear that we can really have a, a really good whole. Um, uh, what do they say? It's not whole, but the balance, like legumes or beans and rice, it's a complex um, uh, protein, and that it does give you what you need. And um, even if like soy is really good, but I guess I wanted to hear from you, you know, keeping that in mind of, of um, you know, now I've been vegan for four years now. And so I would like to hear more about that only in respect to having a subtle diet and the effect that a subtle diet has on our psyche, on the soul. I'm sure you were going in that direction. Yes. But, um, I yeah. just wanted to mention that or or inquire. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for uh, you know redirecting in that there. So uh, you know concept. There's uh, I want to I want to bring this uh, concept of the elements. You know, where body is made up of five elements, and uh, we understand the four elements very well: the earth, water, fire, and air. But the fifth element, the sky, the sky element is very difficult to understand. Um, the, the sky element is prevalent everywhere. Our body, outside, the whole physical world that you see. That is the element that also is, go, goes beyond the physical world. That's totally different subject. But just know that that fifth element is very subtle and connected. Uh, why I want to bring this uh, into discussion is because that is where the, the subtle uh, a nutrient, you can say nutrient or subtle uh, element of the food is. Uh, you know, the six things that we saw, carbohydrate, protein, fats, etc. But where is the spirituality in that? Where is the, uh, uh, the love? So when I cook with the love or I cook with uh, stress, will it have a difference? Does the love have effect on the food? Does the stress have effect on the food and how? So these this subtle vibrations are carried into that fifth element of the food. So if the food is like our body. Yeah. So, sorry, there's an echo. Um, so the, you know, when, when you choose the food, when you select the food and uh, when the food comes to your, in your plate, uh, it, it's not just the food that you're eating, but it has, just know that it has come from a big chain, something called as a food chain. Food chain is, you know, right from the farming, the, there's a farming, uh, there is a uh, uh, cultivation, uh, then there is a um, the component of the uh, processing the food, transportation of the food. Uh, all these industries uh, are involved in bringing that food to your plate. And there are different people involved, farmer, the, the businessmen, the storekeeper, the people who work for uh, making the food. All these people are involved. So their energies uh, go into the food that comes to you. Um, uh, also, physically, uh, the, the farming wise, you know, the different fertilizers, different chemicals, pesticides, and even antibiotics and hormones they use to, uh, to make the food uh, better. Uh, and also the colors, the, uh, the different things that they add, additives in the food to make it more tasty, make it look better. All these things are different chemicals that go into your food. 
And so this will have the effect on your health. This will have effect on you, the soul also. The, so there is a physical component of what goes into the food. There is a spiritual component what goes into the food. And this is the food that you receive. So it is not surprising that no matter what you do, what you do and how you choose, you, in the end, you would have some health effect, some ill effect on your health if, uh, and your mind also by, by accepting this food. So what do you do? Stop eating? No. What do you do is you have one, you have two or three things that you can do. One is you become the part of this food chain. You, to become a part of food chain, meaning you do something to the food so that the, all the negative things that are, were added, you make, uh, you negate that and you make it more healthier for you and then you accept it. So what is the best thing that you do for yourself is you, you make it for yourself. I make it for myself. Because if I buy a ready-made food from outside, I minus myself from the food chain and now I become a consumer. So as a consumer now at the mercy of what has got, gone in the food and now I accept that, you know. So I have, I have a minimum chance of acting on that food to make it healthier for me. To make it more powerful impact on the food, on the food chain, I cook as much as possible. You cook so you know how much goes, how much you're putting in and how do you cook. I can become peaceful. I can connect. As I cook, I can connect uh, with the, the supreme light and in, an, in a very peaceful and uh, happy uh, state of the mind when I cook, I give this um, spiritually high vibrations to the food and make it more healthier. It will negate all the negative energies that have gone in. Uh, you know, workers may not be happy in the industry. Uh, the store from where you buy the workers may not be happy. And so that energy also goes in, you know. Uh, and this is just the plant base. So if the animal uh, are used, for example, farming and animal as a food, those all those energies will have effect. So how do you negate that? This is the, this is the way. You become part of the food chain and you can make a big impact and with a powerful meditative uh, mind, you can make a difference. Second thing that you can do is you can purify your food. Let's say you can't cook every day because I'm working, I don't, I, I don't have uh, that uh, chance to cook, fine. At least make it uh, uh, charge your food. And, uh, and the charge meaning you bring, before you accept the food, you, you uh, connect uh, with the supreme light and you bring the vibrations of the peace and put these vibrations of the peace and happiness into your food before you accept it. You know, we, there is a old practice. There is a practice in the uh, different religions that you pray uh, before you eat. You know, the concept is praying is yeah, you be thankful uh, to God, but then praying also means you be thankful to all the workers, all the people, all the animals who have made it possible for the food to come to you, you be thankful to them. And you be, uh, by that, you bring, uh, you balance, you make it more, uh, you know, palatable, more healthier food for you. Uh, third thing that you can easily do, but we forget is don't add any more negativity in it. 
don't just grab the food and run in a hurry and begin to eat. So hurriedly eating food, mm -hmm. avoid it. Um, because then you're, you're adding anxiety. You're adding, uh, you know, stress. Already there is so much stress in the food and I add more stress and then I eat. So you just be aware of that. Uh, also, what does it mean? What does it mean that uh, you, um, how, how can I not uh, add the stress in the food? Is you give importance to your food, your body. You're, you are the soul and you give your importance to your body. Be the mother of your body. I, the soul, am mother of my body. And as a, as a mother, lovingly, you, you provide uh, this uh, time and attention to your body. Give 15 minutes to your body and sit in silence and eat. Don't have too many negative thoughts as you eat. And so that way your mind will remain focused on what you're eating. It will derive more nutrients, better nutrients, and it will have healthier impact on you. So that's mindful eating, or you know, you can say soulful eating. That's important. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Time of the day, Sister Edna, time of the day and uh, and then uh, the fasting. These are the two aspects we did not touch, but very quickly, time of the day, uh, you know, our body uh, is, has a biological clock uh, and uh, it is in sync with uh, the, what's outside, you know, um, with the ambience. So, at certain times of the day, you will have surge of the hormones that, uh, that are more and at certain other times, the hormones are less. So uh, uh, certain periods of the time you would have, uh, you would benefit more if you ate, you know. Uh, we generally, there are three uh, portions that say breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, yeah, and then medically also they say that uh, it is good to have little meals throughout the day, you know, three, four times to have equal proportion of nutrients coming to you and not just eat one time and have a big surge and uh, avoid eating other times. You can do that, uh, but then uh, uh, you, you can do that on a less regular intervals. Fasting is good because then it, um, it purges, it uh, resets your body clocks because uh, we have unknowingly created some uh, patterns in our body and this pattern need to be stopped. So when you fast, uh, you know, it seems like if you fast, you're, you're not eating proteins like we were mentioning that you need to have proteins, etc. But it has that harmful effect which be, would be much less than the useful effect. The most useful effect is you reset your body and um, that has a much more beneficial effect. And you, uh, next day when you're uh, starting again, don't just jump into heavy meals. You just start slow, you know, like uh, uh, light, lighter diet as you break your fast. So that's my suggestion to you all. There are many, many more things that uh, we can talk about, but I think it's the end of the time, 7.58. Uh, last two minutes, if any, anybody has any question, I can answer that. And I can quickly scan through the, uh, the chats and see if I can answer if there is any question in the chat. I, I believe you're all, yeah, you can unmute and ask. Yes. 
all these uh suggestions by by you all in the chat they are very appreciate appreciable so raw organic nuts fresh variety of mushrooms excellent source of proteins yes this is very important these are good for body and uh, don't uh, just be dependent on uh, being a body be a soul also have a soulful eating All right. Anything that I did not cover and that I need to ans answer, you can uh, ask. Otherwise, we will take a minute of silence. Uh, maybe just one thing, as you said, um, it's hard to know, right? Like you read something and then you find another article that says the opposite. Um, do you have a, a place though that most of the time you feel like it's pretty like a reputable source that if you're looking for information, like you go to this website or book or person that you feel like it's stressful. So that like when you start, instead of just Google, like, right, like that you, you like to go to. Yeah, yes. Uh, there are, I would recommend that uh, if you want to choose, you know, Medline Plus, um, something like a uh, Mayo Clinic, you know, these are reputable websites, uh, you know, Harvard, uh, the website uh, by Harvard. So these are a good ones to look at. Thank you. Yes. And they, they give in a simplified manner uh, what we want to know. And, uh, and there, as, as you go down the line into these websites, there will be some others that you don't want to go. So just read the essence of, and then stop there. So. so thank you all and Remember that we are that soul in our bodies and we can make a difference in our, our body. We can make a difference in our life, in our world. Om Shanti. I will end. See you next next week.